Italy is many things to many people. Art, romance, scenery, history. To the Florentine, it is Firenze la Bella, Florence the Beautiful, center of medieval Italian culture and home of Michelangelo. The great sculptor Michelangelo is probably the greatest of Florentines. Some of his historic works stand in the churchyard of San Lorenzo. Here are figures alive, human and bursting with vitality. The Italy of Michelangelo is the Italy that led Europe out of the Dark Ages and into the glorious light of the Renaissance. City-states like Florence, ruled by the Medici family, helped nourish the spark of genius that today draws thousands of visitors to Firenze La Bella each year. If towers were a sign of affluence in older times, then San Germinano was a wealthy place indeed, for the picturesque little walled town boasts of 14 lofty structures that dominate the surrounding countryside. Castle Brolio at Chianti is one of the best preserved of Italy's ancient castles. Built in 1100, the castle has been lived in continuously by the Riccasoli family. Shelled and bombed in more than one war, Brolio was headquarters for the Nazis until the British drove them out in 1944. But now, the setting is peaceful. The grape harvest is underway at Castle Brolio. Hundreds of workers, operating as they have for the past thousand years, pick the crop in the hilly vineyards. They work with a will because the owner has instituted a profit-sharing plan that assures each family of food and revenue. Grapes have been picked in this way for many generations on the 16,000-acre estate, from the vines into the baskets, from the baskets into the barrels, from the barrels, well, don't rush us. Nobody is in a hurry. You can't rush good wine. Bunches of grapes tied to the horns of the oxen signal that the day's work is done, the harvest is complete, and all is well at Castle Brolio. When harvest time is over, the Riccasolis invite the farm colony to a wine fiesta on the terrace of the castle. The Baron and his family greet each worker individually. A toast in Brolio's finest to the fruits of men's labors and the friendship in their hearts. Looking out over his ancient vineyards that have brought his family prosperity, the Baron is a happy host. Siena, another city rich in history and medieval tradition, is sometimes called the city of dreams. Centuries of spectacle and splendor come into sharp focus in the famed piazza or public square. Endless associations, historical, political, and social, are connected with it. The very web of Siena's history has been spun about the old world square, in which war and peace have alternately flowed. Today, the setting is peaceful, and the only shouts are those of the vendors selling their wares. But once a year, the old city rouses itself, turns back the pages of history to revive a gay, colorful pageant dating back to the 13th century. This is the Palio of Siena, one of the oldest and oddest of horse races in the world. The word Palio means flag or banner, and Siena is flag bedecked for the occasion. The centuries unfold in Siena's ancient square where thousands of gaily costumed spectators watch the preliminary phase of the pageant when flag waving is more than just a phase. Contestants represent the city's many contadre or zones. Rivalry is keen amongst the standard bearers whose adroit handling of the flags is eagerly followed by their cohorts in the crowded square. On a given signal, the flags are tossed in the air and caught again. They ride bareback in the Palio of Siena, and each horse has been blessed. 
Now it's every man for himself in the classic race in Siena's circular capo. Padding is hung along the walls at the turns to protect the riders should they fall. And fall they do. Spurred on by the shouts of their followers, the riders flirt with fate at every turn. And as so often happens, fate seems to have the last laugh. But when centuries of tradition are holding the reins, the risks never seem too great. And tradition brings out the best in both man and mount. The race is over, and the Palio of Siena is won. Venice, the queen city of the Adriatic, is built on a cluster of small mud islands, has canals for streets, gondolas for taxi cabs, 400 bridges cross the canals, and ornate palaces stand along the banks. Much of the political and commercial importance of Venice has been dimmed by the years, but it is still famed for its color and romance in a novel setting of water where streets should be. Your fuel comes by boat. So does the doctor, and the ambulance is a hospital ship. All the comings and goings are limited by the 500 miles of canal that delineate the city. And here, the postman is never troubled with the hazard of aching feet. On moving day, you barge in on your new neighbor. The merchant of Venice has been doing business at the same old stand and in the same old way for many centuries. There's no city in the world that lives like Venice except Venice and the Queen City has lived like this for 1,600 years. Of course, they didn't start right off with a fire department full grown and all the other modern trimmings. The fabulous city of the Dojai came of age slowly and it's done swimmingly ever since. Yes, everything is done by boat. Even the traffic cop is waterborne, and to passenger and driver alike, he is all wet. But enough of broken rules and broken hearts. It's time for the water carnival, an annual event dating back to the 14th century, when Venice was world famed as a trading center. Half a million persons line the Grand Canal, the Broadway of Venice, to see hundreds of gondolas and gondoliers in a magnificent procession. The Venice of yesterday lives on in a colorful panorama of history.